I think that uh, increasing nominal interest rates has made short-term deposits more attractive. And I think that that has detracted from acceptance of precious metals. But I think a much more important reason is that because all of us were schooled in terms of our investment performance and expectation by 40 years of benign economic climate, uh, which is to say we've been schooled not to become scared. I may be ex excessively scared. Renowned credit analyst, seasoned investor and founder of Sprott Global Resource Investments, Rick Rule, says investors in and out of the United States are not as scared as they should be about the turn the economy and the markets are taking in 2023. According to Rule, a highly successful resource sector investor with over 45 years of experience in the markets, investors are lured by the false and carefully manipulated data being peddled by regulators and policymakers to give people a false sense of calm. Rule believes this is just the calm before the storm, a storm that could hit any time and break a lot of things at a very rapid pace. During a recent interview with Soar Financially, Rule discusses his outlook on the U.S. economy, the overall global economy, and the precious metals market. On the U.S. economy, Rule says he is pleasantly surprised that the Fed's consecutive rate hikes and other monetary tightening measures to combat inflation have not severely impacted the economy. Instead, even after the fastest rate hike exercise in U.S. history, the economy has continued to perform better than many analysts, Rule included, predicted a few months ago. Rule says the same is pretty much applicable to the rest of the global economy. He uses Europe as an example. Despite the war in Ukraine and many other macro issues affecting the region, the situation is still far well off than many predicted last year. What Rule cannot predict, however, is the authenticity of the calm and how much longer it would last. The renowned analyst and investor says he is nervous because when the effects of all these issues begin to hit at once, the burden might be too much on the economy and investors around the world. During the interview, Rule also gives his outlook on the performance of gold and other precious metals. Though gold is close to its all-time highs at the current price of $1,929.69, Rule says he is surprised that the precious metal is not trading at much higher levels given the current economic situation. He adds that the reason for this is that investors are not scared enough about the coming storm. They are so assured by the false calm that they are not taking measures to safeguard their investments by taking shelter in precious metals that have, for thousands of years, protected investors against the kind of all-out financial storm that Rule is predicting for the global economy. We will now bring you clips from the interview. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos. You can also check out our other videos on gold, silver, and other precious metals. Thanks and enjoy the video. I think that may be the reason that gold is hanging in there. I think the reason that gold hasn't soared, frankly, uh, is that we were schooled by 40 years of benign economic climate beginning in 1982, and I would suggest ending in 2022. <laughs> Uh, so I think that confidence is quite high. Uh, while I'm attracted to the performance of the broad economy, I am not attracted, but rather terrified uh, when I look at collective, which is to say government balance sheets. We've talked about this uh, on your show, show before. The strength of the U.S. economy ha has not translated into covering the budget deficit, as an example. Uh, or dealing with the debt. And that circumstance is the same in Europe. Uh, I think that uh, increasing nominal interest rates has made short-term deposits more attractive. And I think that that has detracted from acceptance of precious metals. But I think a much more important reason is that because all of us were schooled in terms of our investment performance and expectation, by 40 years of benign economic climate, uh, which is to say we've been schooled not to become scared. I may be ex excessively scared, but when I look at gold and uh, I think about the fact that, as you say, it's, quote, held up, um, I am really surprised uh, that it hasn't gone further faster. When you talk as an example about real interest rates, uh, understand that uh, I would define a real interest rate as uh, a rate paid as rent on savings 
that exceeded the depreciation of the currency that the savings were denominated in. And the forward-thinking measures of inflation, uh, I think, are very misleading. Uh, as an example, when it suits them, uh, they describe core inflation, which doesn't include food or fuel. As your listeners can tell by looking at me, I like to eat. Uh, and so that definition of inflation uh, doesn't apply to me. But two, uh, when they talk about CPI, consumer price index rate of inflation, they're really trying to construct a cost of living index. And, and the fact that uh, inflation doesn't include the cost of government, which is to say tax, which consumes more household income on average than food, energy, shelter, and travel combined, you truly have a fallacious in, uh, index. And I guess that one of the things that has, I think, kept down uh, the gold price is that consumers and investors and taxpayers have come to allow their interpretation of interest, not interest, I'm sorry, inflation, uh, to be shaped by what is frankly a fraudulent method. Uh, when I look at the impact of increased tans, uh, uh, taxation and the certain threat of uh, more rapidly increasing tax uh, on my budget, I understand that the stated measure of CPI has in no way measures my own cost of living. Now, Kai, if I didn't have to pay the tax, uh, I probably wouldn't complain so much about the index. But I, I, I suspect that very much in the, like in the 1970s, as people come to understand the impact of the deterioration of the purchasing power of their savings, that people will become uh, less wedded uh, to interest yielding savings products uh, and more interested in investments that traditionally um, have offered better shelter. The Fed's inflation metrics have always been sources of controversy among experts. Policymakers say that excluding food and energy items from core inflation measures is important because these items tend to go up and down in price dramatically and often. But expert analysts like Rule believe this is just another tool to hoodwink people while keeping the real inflation figures hidden. Last year, when official data showed U.S. inflation was close to hitting double digits at 40-year highs, several experts said they believed real inflation was already above 12%. During his interview, Rule also discusses the issue of currency debasement and the loss of purchasing power, a disturbing phenomenon that further strengthens the case for investing in hard assets like precious metals instead of short-term deposits that investors now seem to prefer. Let's get back to the interview as Rick Rule also discusses the importance of having a long-term time horizon when investing in precious metals. Imagine that you're a Dane uh, and the 58% of your household income is consumed by government. Yet your government continues to run a deficit. Imagine now that your savings in euro-denominated bonds are yielding you 2% in euro, where the after-tax purchasing power of your savings is declining by 6.5% compounded. What you learn as a Dane uh, is that your savings are costing you 4.5% of purchasing power a year, and you're ignoring the largest single factor in the depreciation of your purchasing power, which is to say increased uh, taxation. I'm not saying this merely as a political statement, Kai, although I do like to propagandize. I, I'm saying this because people pay attention to easy-to-grasp headline statistics, like a 2% inflation target. The problem with a 2% inflation target is that the measurement matrix that people are, are accepting is fraudulent. I guess I have a different orientation and a different time frame. Uh, I don't own gold for a move from 1950 to 2075. Uh, I own gold to preserve my wealth. 
uh, ironically, Kai, and, and your listeners are going to hate this because they're young and aggressive and all these kind of things. And they're, you know, they're trying to make their car payments and stuff like that. Um, I own a lot of gold and I kind of hope the price doesn't go up. Uh, for me, uh, precious metals are uh, catastrophe insurance. And I just as soon not have a catastrophe. I, I, I hope when I shed my mortal coil, however I am, however old I am, that I look back and say, you know, owning all that gold uh, was a waste, but it allows me to sleep nights and stay calm. Uh, I guess as a consequence of that orientation, I'm much less time sensitive. Uh, I own gold and silver and I own most equities uh, with a five-year term or a 10-year term. It's odd now that I'm 70 years of age uh, and I have less time on earth that I've become much more patient. Uh, when I was 21 or 22, I sort of thought that what happened over the next two or three months was relevant. But it's so impossible to forecast, uh, and the moves that you can enjoy in two or three months are so small that they really aren't relevant. Uh, Five-year timeframes, six-year timeframes, 10-year timeframes are very relevant. When I and, and we've discussed this before on your show, Kai, when I look back at the speculative moves that have really made a difference to me, uh, the 10 baggers, the 15 baggers, the 20 baggers. Characteristically, they took five or six years to work out. I may have wanted them to take place in a quarter, but what I wanted is irrelevant. Why well, want what you can't have? They did take five or six years. And by the way, almost every 10 bagger I ever enjoyed delivered me a 50% share price decline sometime during my holding period. So in addition, in addition to being patient, you have to be persistent. And people who pay too much attention to the Fed and not enough attention to the underlying investment attributes and people whose time horizons are, are inconsistent with the time demands to achieve the investment outcomes that they're trying to cause to occur are doomed to failure. If you have a three-month orientation uh, in what is a six or seven-year cycle, you will snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Just because your investment orientation is out of sync with what is required uh, mm -hmm. to experience the outcome that you're hoping for. It's very perverse. According to Rick Rule, when investing in precious metals, it is important to have a long-term time horizon and stick to your investment strategy regardless of fluctuating market conditions. It is obvious that we are in very uncertain times. The economy is showing more resilience than everyone expects, yet government debt continues to spiral out of control, and there will be more uncertainties and chaos ahead. This is why investors like Rick Rule are advocating a return to trusted hard assets like gold and silver that have stayed true to their fundamentals for centuries. What are your thoughts on Rick Rule's interview and his analysis of the current economic situation and market conditions? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.